number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Hi, and welcome to Studio Time with Zach. After dark. Absolutely nothing about the show has changed, except the time of day. On the easel tonight, we have another pet portrait for you all. I'm going to be going a lot more in-depth in how the comic book grid system works, going through the ins and outs of how I transfer from a tiny image to a larger image on the canvas. Let's get to work. If you thought I was gonna wear that fedora throughout the entire video, you're even crazier than I am for even wearing the damn fedora to begin with. As you all know, typically the first thing that I do with most of my paintings is glue comic books to the canvas. At this point, we're 14 episodes in. If you wanna learn a little bit more about gluing things to other things, go back to kindergarten. Back to kindergarten. The next step is always the skeleton outline. For those of you that know, thanks for watching repeatedly. For those of you that don't, that's where I transfer the smaller image from the digital drawing onto the larger canvas surface. Let's get into the detail and show you how to do that right now. All right, everyone, check this magic trick out. We're gonna make this transform right before your very eyes. Look at that. Just kidding, guys. I just didn't wanna waste your time watching me sketch. Moving on, you're gonna see what we have to do is take a photograph of the canvas surface with the comic books and then upload an image of our sketch and then you want to size it to the shape of the canvas just like so all right now that we have this looking nice you go ahead up into the top left corner select opacity adjust left there we go all the way over all the way back all the way over all the way back all right find a nice sweet spot so you can see all the information underneath go ahead and zoom in for you guys to see it right behind the eyes hands you can see very clearly a man removing his gloves check out where the collar is at let's zoom in a little further looking good now you can see how to transfer the image what better color for a skeleton outline than a little titanium white boom What's nice about doing it on the iPad is as I'm painting on the canvas, I can keep going back to the iPad, zooming in on area, zooming away, keeping up with how I'm looking in comparison to the original sketch. Very user-friendly, very simple technique that is uh, fun and exciting and it gives you something to look at while you work. There we have it, the skeleton outline is finished. It's time to move on to the background. Um, as you can see, this little pup has passed away. That's why we've given him angel wings. And uh, we're gonna give him a nice bright sky to float on into heaven with. Let's move on to the background. It's always such an honor to be able to immortalize a family's cherished pet with my artwork. It's so rewarding when I see the family's reaction to the painting that I had done of their best friend. I wanna say this is my 19th pet portrait and I'm always taking new commissions if you guys are interested. Seven hours later. As I'm sure a lot of you party animals know, sometimes when you party after dark, it goes on until the morning. We got one more day ahead of us with this pet portrait. I'm gonna go over a little bit more in depth the mixing aspect of how I mix my colors and a little bit of the color theory, so. Let's talk colors, guys. Today I'm gonna be showing you a visual representation of the color wheel using, you guessed it, PPG paints, that's right. So if you guys aren't familiar with the color wheel, the color wheel is a visual representation of the relationship between colors chromatically. So as you can see on the beginning of the right hand side here, we have red, blue, yellow. Those are primary colors. What happens when you mix those colors together? So you get secondary colors, which you can see on my left hand side here. Think about it as basic as can be, blue and yellow make green. Blue, yellow, make green. Okay, so those are primary colors. When you mix those together, you get secondary colors. There's also a third option, tertiary colors. That's where if you were to mix red and green, the color that comes from that is tertiary. So primary plus primary makes secondary. Primary plus secondary make tertiary. Very basic, very brief description of how the color wheel and color theory works. So there's a lot of room to play with. I say, just have fun, make a mess. Literally, that's what art is about. It's making a mess and it's getting dirty. So, mess around with the color wheel. I'll get into a little bit of how I mix the colors for the fur of today's doggy. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned a thing or two about the color wheel. Boom, it's time to mix paint. 
If you remember what the cute little pup in today's painting looked like, he had a nice light brown skin tone. Uh, we only need to figure out the base because we're going to be shading over top of that as well. So to get a brown, we're going to take a primary color and a secondary color to make a tertiary color. That is yellow plus orange. We'll shake it up, make sure it's nice. Ooh, look at that yellow. Mix the shake up the orange. This is more so trial and error. After a while, you figure it out and you get good at it, but set it down, get a little more. And then I'm just gonna use the same brush for time's sake. Set that down and then you can see light orange color. Not too off, not too bad. Take some titanium white and see what that does. Mix it all together. And what do you got? A nice tan. And there you have it. We've mixed the primary with the secondary and we've made a tertiary color, which will be the base of the dog. Let's start painting. I know what you guys may be thinking, that's pretty orange. Like I mentioned, this is a base. So what I went ahead and did was add a layer of unbleached titanium with the orange background. It actually provides a really nice pop. Then you know I had to add the sun heart. You can't have a Zack Rudder painting without it. Now I know y'all know what's up next. We got the base colors down. We got some shading going. We got the wings looking nice. Time to outline my favorite part. Let's get it. Can we all talk about how dumb my camera angle is? Um, trust me, I freehanded the outline, but my big ass head is in the way. Let's change this up real quick. Boom, there we are, much better. Now you can see a little bit of the final detailing. This is the first time I've added wings to a pup that has passed away, and uh, I'm gonna add a halo as well, just so we know that this, uh, this cutie goes on to a good place. As you all know, the final part of any painting, the signature, let's get it. Wow, can you believe it? It's that time again, the close-ups. The end of a yet another studio time with Zach. I, uh, I love this part. You guys finally get to see the details that I've got to look at the entire time that I worked on this piece. Love the comic books underneath. I love how this dog came out, and I cannot wait to give it to my clients. I know they're gonna love it too. And there you have it, another pet portrait in the books. If you guys had fun, if you enjoyed yourself, if you learned a thing or two, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support means the world, and I thank every one of you guys for making it this far. Tune in next week to find out what's next on the easel at Studio Time with Zach. Bye, guys. was over just yet, did you? This is Zachary Rudder, thanking you guys for watching first and foremost, and asking you to check out my website. We just added a new monthly feature, the Print of the Month Club, so check it out. Uh, what this is, is a monthly subscription that offers a surprise print at the beginning of every month. It's 10% off the original price of any other prints, and hey, if you don't want to do a monthly subscription, check out all the other prints that I have. Tons of cool stuff. You're Support means the world to me. So thanks for watching. Tune in next week for all the fun we have at studio time with Zach. I'm off to do a mural. Toodaloo.